everyone, and welcome to a real conversation between two native English speakers. I'm Liz Wade, and this is Adam Navis. Hi, Adam. Hello, Liz. Hello, everyone. Yes, and so today we are going to discuss our program called Sending COVID-19 Vaccines Around the World. But before we get into that, if you have not listened to that program or watched it on YouTube yet, take a moment to listen to that and to go through it so that you know what we're talking about in this conversation. Um, you can find it on our website where you can listen and read along, and that's at spotlightenglish.com or, of course, on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash spotlightenglish1. And then, um, yeah, you can listen to that program in a classic version, in a no music version, and also in an advanced version. So that's a lot of versions for you to choose from. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also listen to the program as a podcast anywhere you can get your podcasts. And I did also want to mention that we have uh, a new thing that we have done in the last few months at Spotlight English, and that is uh, Spotlight English memberships on YouTube. And that is a really great way to just push your learning a little further to get more from Spotlight English. You can um, pay a little bit each month to support our work and our videos. Um, and you can get extra, extra exclusive member videos. You get your name listed in every single video we make after you start supporting us. Um, uh, PDF scripts that you can print out and keep forever. And then also some special videos from us and a chance to uh, join our Spotlight English Facebook group. So that is really great. If you want to check out memberships, click that join button below and you can learn more about that. See what's offered before you click uh, join totally. And while you're down there, why don't you give this video a like? Just click that little like button. And if you're not subscribed, please don't miss out on anything from Spotlight English. Click that subscribe button and the little bell to never miss a video. And I think uh, that has gotten all of the uh, business out of the way, as they say, right, Adam? Well said. I think you covered everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you might notice that today I have a, I have a little bit of a, a suntan, a little bit of a burn uh. on my forehead. I wasn't quite as careful as I should have been on our holiday trip yesterday. Uh, so you spent some time outside. Yes. And that makes a lot um, of sense because you're, uh, the weather is getting cooler and yes. sometimes you forget that the sun can still uh, yes. give you a sunburn. Well, and it was just, it was gorgeous yesterday. Yeah. The sun was shining, there were beautiful clouds, and it was cooler weather so you could walk around. It was really great. It was a holiday yesterday yeah. for us, of course. So we were, we were both off work yep. on a much needed uh, little vacation. Yes. So, Though I will uh, say, as someone with no hair, I'm always aware of the sun. Like that's yes, not a I'll that's bet. not something I forget about. Do you do you sunscreen the top of your oh, head certainly. or do you wear a hat? Certainly both. I mean, but if I'm not going to wear a hat, I'll definitely wear sunscreen. Just yeah, front to back. See, I didn't even I wore my hair down, so I didn't even put sunscreen on my neck. I yeah. just used my hair as my as my yeah. sunscreen. Yeah, but I do have I made okay. So my family does a little uh, tradition every year on Labor Day, which is the day we celebrated yesterday, okay. um, which is the first Monday in every September. Mm -hmm. And we always walk to a lighthouse in Ludington. Oh. And usually we go up, but you'll have to see what happens. I am going to make a video about that tradition, and I will share it on our YouTube channel. Oh, nice. And we have so. a program about lighthouses, don't we? We do have a program about lighthouses. I actually, um, my only experience with lighthouses is walking up to the lighthouse, right. like on this tradition. But I learned a lot from that program, yeah. actually. Um, we see, there's so many programs we could just do a conversation about. We should talk about those programs. I know. Well, <laughs> sunscreen is one good thing that we do to protect ourselves. And this program 
Yes. Is about another thing people can do to <laughs> See, we're themselves. getting back to the program. Okay. So um back. I was I was going to say for this program, um we I like to kind of give a little reminder of what the program has been about. So it starts with how um really the first vaccine started to get spread around the world and the story of um, some boys that brought that vaccine to Central America. And then the, the program doesn't talk about this, but they go, they actually went uh, many places in the world. And then it goes on to say, um, it, it goes on to the problem of how we're going to transport the COVID-19 vaccines all around the world. Um, but these are also problems that like, for example, UNICEF and other um, vaccine um, uh organizations have been trying to bring vaccines to the places that they are needed um, over many years. Yeah. This is so. before even COVID-19 was in everybody's mind and bodies yes. in the world. Yeah. So yeah. what did you think of that story, Adam, at the beginning? Well, the story at the beginning really made me think because so much of life I, I take for granted, like cellular, mobile phones, smartphones, yeah. They have only been around for a short time. The internet in human history has still relatively, I think it's 25 or 30 years old, but even widely yeah. adopted. Things like YouTube, which you might be watching this this video on. I think it was 2006 new. or something, right. YouTube. So to think about, well, of course they had cold storage, ways of keeping this vaccine at very cold temperatures. Oh, and then you realize, oh, maybe they didn't. Well, how would they do that? And of course, they had to get creative. And in this particular story, it um, some of the ethics, meaning whether it was right or wrong, the way they did this. And I don't. Should we just? I don't want to spoil the. If for anyone who hasn't listened to this, but should we just talk about how they? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, uh, well, I think it begins even with. Uh, we have a program about how the very first vaccine was invented, and that even is a crazy story mm -hmm. about how. Um, it was for smallpox, and um, this uh, Edward Jenner was a, just a country doctor, and he saw that if uh, the people, the the women who were milking the cows, if they got cowpox, that they wouldn't get smallpox. So he basically started experimenting on the people around him, uh, giving them cowpox, and then purposefully trying to infect them with smallpox, and he found that um, then they would not get smallpox. Yeah. So... Um, so uh, that was a way that they were spreading that vaccine around England. And actually, um, the Chinese had been doing that for um, a while as well. Like there are there are accounts of um, Chinese people, I think it's inhaling um, dried particles of, of smallpox so that they take very small bits of smallpox into their system where it trains their immune system. So hmm. um, we do have a program about that, but that is the vaccine that these boys were um, were yeah. hired to bring well, across. Yeah, they were boys who, who were orphans, which means their parents had either died or they had no, they had no parents. Right. So um, in order to keep the, they actually wanted to keep the virus alive so they had to systematically get one boy right. sick and then the next boy sick and then the next boy sick and then the next boy sick all all, all across a, a boat that all yeah. across the ocean, right? Weeks long journey because yeah. they didn't have any way to keep it cold or to, um, you know, keep it between a slide so that they could transfer it or right. or whatever. They had to keep right. that particular. Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 the, the heart wrenching part is. um these boys didn't have a lot of choice to do this. Yeah. And they went from one country and supposedly, as far as we know, once they got to this the new this new country, they were adopted by families and given resources. But um, still... Yeah. Uh, Some of it, them were as young as like three or four years yeah. old. Yeah. Like, right. I mean, now we would never... Um, like scientific you would hope scientific experiments would never be done on children like that. Like right. they would never be put in that position. But it does oh. raise in, and this is a interesting question. I want to hear what you have to say. And if, if you're listening to this and you have something to add, put it in the comments, what you think. Yeah. So vaccines are a different kind of medicine than, um, 
like a surgery or you have a headache and you take some medicine, right? It help, that helps right. you as an individual. A vaccine may help you as an individual, but what it really does is help public health. Right, yeah. So making choices for public health versus individual health, because some people may have a vaccine and they may get sick for a couple days or they may not feel good uh, or they may have an adverse, which means bad, reaction. But overall, it helps people. So I think, was it was it okay that these few boys helped a big group of people, even though they had some negative consequences right. themselves? Well, and um, and even just to make that question um, like deeper, like it's not that they just helped one village in Central America, right? So once that once that vaccine had crossed the ocean, it could go from Central America to North America. Yeah, anywhere South there's America. human to human transmission. Right, exactly. So it could be it could be spread all through the Americas just by these like eight what was it eight or ten boys yeah, who crossed this ocean and the, a very small amount yeah and then like i said um in the beginning of this program this voyage actually included more stops along the way so they went uh i think they went to spain next mm. and then maybe like around the mediterranean oh i'm not exactly sure i should have i should have double checked um i did read about it but um yeah, I don't know how I feel about that because I I mean, I think that's a very brave thing they did. Yeah. But um I mean, these are still people. But They're the same kids. thing is true today. Right. Some people who are getting the COVID-19 vaccine have negative effects from it. Yeah, that is true. And but far fewer than are having trouble from from COVID itself. I, I agree. I, yeah. I agree with you. I'm more saying the logical point. I think it's very difficult to take a step towards something as a group, as a country, we'll say, that we know is good for the country, but will yeah. have negative effects on some people, even though we don't well, know who those people you know, are. Everything we do, Adam, has some risk attached to it. I mean, I, even I sitting in your house doing nothing has some risk attached to it, right? Yes. Um, like but, but being your... in a car or on a motorbike or, you know, all of those things have some risk. Right. But um, I think if you are accepting the risk of a vaccine, you're also accepting that you're doing your part as a community. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think as that's... As part of the community. I think that's true. And I yeah. think in the United States, we have a very strong, a much stronger sense of the rights of the individual. Yes. Of one person is more important than the rights of the group. We have so talked about that a lot, like um, in our yeah. live shows about, you know, masks and, and COVID yeah. and everything like that. And I think I've been really studying some other... Um, not deeply studying, but reading yeah. some materials and some books about other cultures where they would say the 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 group is much str more important than the individual. Right. And uh, it's even hard to get my brain around to understand how my I wouldn't do something that's best for me or the people in my family. It, it has to do with, you know, the, the a larger family or the tribe that I'm a part of. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that has very, that's not just, sometimes we talk about culture and we think, oh, you like this kind of food. I like that kind of food, right? It's just a right. difference. But when it comes to maybe getting a, like vaccines, it might be easier in cultures that have a uh, more public uh, sense of the public good. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, so we need to move even, to another country. Even, even here where... In the U.S., it's very uh, easy to get a COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, many people are still not vaccinated. Right. <clears throat> um, even though uh, health authorities have been suggesting that they get vaccinated, um, 
And then, you know, people people here are saying, I'm not going to get that vaccine, where people in some other countries who don't have access to the vaccine are, you know, practically begging to get it. Yeah. Um, and I think that also is a really difficult question about, or even, even just in general about this program sending vaccines, any vaccine around the world, right? Yeah. Um, it talks about like uh, West and Central Africa where there's not enough refrigeration to keep vaccines cold, even just normal vaccines, not just the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, and so, you know, UNICEF is working to like build refrigeration uh, in a in a line, basically, to make sure that the vaccines, any vaccines can reach people there. Yeah, because assumably, unfortunately, I should say, this is yeah. probably not the last time we're going to have to be prepared right. to handle a pandemic situation. Right. And so if you can build out that infrastructure now uh, for hopefully it's it's 50 years or 100 years from now, but yeah. um, hopefully we can we can better be better equipped to have vaccine what do they call it? vaccine justice vaccine equality yeah um, equity equity maybe that's the word i'm looking for um one thing that i did find really interesting about this program is um thinking about places that have not had uh, covid cases yet hmm. like uh there are some like far away island countries um that are pretty isolated that have had no known cases of covid yet and, um, you know, that we still have to get the vaccine there mm -hmm. uh, safely somehow without also bringing COVID. But um, because not not they might have enough um, like medical, you know, not knowledge, but uh, like equipment, they might have the equipment to keep people safe. But it spreads so quickly that they actually could run out of room the same way that, you know, many places are running out of room. And so it's still really important to get the vaccines there. And how do you do that? How do you get it to every place in remote villages? Right. Right. Because once one person brings it in, that's how viruses spread, right? To two right. people, to four people, to eight yeah. people, et cetera. Um, in the comments on some of these programs already, like we have had people saying that, you know, they... Um, have been able to get the vaccine or they they say their government is doing a lot to help them get the vaccine. Um, and I would love to hear what people think. Like, is is it easy to get a vaccine where you are? Like, um, yeah, how do you feel about that vaccine? Is it is it easy to get all vaccines where you live? Um, because, of course, that, you know, we just talked about how sometimes that is not easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, One and... Oh, and there ahead. are a number that, um, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the COVID-19 vaccine, but of course, vaccines have been around for a number of diseases and so many, like when I brought my young children, they just gave them the childhood vaccine. You know, I, I don't even remember. Measles, mumps, rubella, tetanus, yeah. uh, RSV. Yeah. Uh, all that stuff. Do you oh. know what? Okay, and, and here's how I'm going to wrap it up, Adam. I'm okay. going to wrap it up with some hope. Do you know what vaccine they didn't have to give your kids? Oh, yes, I do. Smallpox. They did not have to give your kids the smallpox vaccine. And that is because in the 1970s, the whole world, and I'm going to get oh, so worked up about this because yeah. this is my favorite story and it gives me so much hope. And you should all check out the smallpox uh uh, program that we have made because it is it is one of my absolute favorites. Um, in the 70s, as a world, we decided that we were going to get rid of smallpox. Seriously, I'm getting so worked up about this. I love it. In a good we way. We decided worked we were all going to work way. together and get rid of it for good. And we did. Like health organizations around the world, they they lined up kids, they lined up adults, everyone got vaccinated for this for this uh, virus, which right. it's a virus, same, same, you know, COVID-19 is also a virus. Um, we went, we sent health organizations to remote villages to every place on earth because we knew it was a very important thing to do. And I think it was in 1978, I want to say, uh, it was completely eradicated and there have been no no known cases of smallpox in the world since that point because 
everybody got vaccinated and that was it and that was done um and they're trying to do that with things like polio um which is is still something that we're fighting with um but that people you know do get vaccinated against and we can get rid of things right like that is the hope here yeah we can get rid of it just like we got rid of smallpox and um yeah everyone should check out that program and when you can do your part yeah that's great yeah all right so uh that was my little bit of hope my little bit of like yes moment um and uh, I hope you have checked out like all of those programs, the smallpox program, the vaccine programs, if you want to learn more about the history of vaccines or how vaccines work. And of course, um, I also um, have made up a COVID playlist. So if you want to um, hear about masks during COVID time or Captain Tom says thank you during COVID time or um, the life and loneliness, people's experiences during COVID. And of course, this program, Sending COVID Vaccines Around the World. You can check that out in the COVID playlist um, and also in our vaccine playlist. Uh, learn more about those health words there. Check out uh, the join button below to become a member of the Spotlight English channel. And uh, yeah, like I said before, hit that like button and subscribe. And uh, yeah, until next time, listen, watch, practice, learn. Spotlight out. Mm -hmm.